Harper broke his thumb after taking 97 miles per hour. He has been so effective, even though we haven't seen him in the field for a long period of time. What's your freak out factor right now? End of June. Yeah, I'm putting that an 11 out of 10 because it's been 11 years since the Phillies last fielded a postseason team. That's the second longest drought in the game, longest drought in the National League. And, you know, it's really hard not to think it's going to continue if Bryce Harper is out for the foreseeable future, which he appears to be. We'll find out more later today, Lauren, but uh, Philadelphia Inquirer reported on Monday that uh, it's looking like surgery for Harper for this injury, and that would be a minimum of two months. And, you know, he's been just so important to them, as you said, despite not being in the field and the difficulty that comes with that without having the DH spot available to, uh, you know, those other uh, non-gold glovers they have in their lineup. Um, he's just been a monster at the plate again this year. Uh, 318 average, 385 on base, 599 slug. And he's playing through an elbow injury that, quite frankly, a lot of players would not play through and, and that will, in all likelihood, require some kind of intervention maybe in the offseason, although he uh, has shown improvement in that area. But... Um, he's just been huge for them is the point, and this is obviously a huge blow. We wouldn't even know he had an elbow injury from the way he's swinging the bat, unfortunate yeah. to say the least. Wes Johnson, Twins pitching coach, leaving to do the exact same thing at LSU. Don't you leave us for another channel. Your freak out factor is what, Anthony? <laughs> Oh, man, that's an eight. Uh, that's what? where they rank in the major leagues in ERA, the Twins. And that's a surprise because, you know, we had a lot of questions about that starting staff coming into the year. But it's in part a credit to Wes Johnson's work there. They are 10th in the majors in pitching wins above replacement since he came to Minnesota in 2019. And when he came, it was a surprise. He came from Arkansas, an SEC school, and uh, believed to be the first you know, pitching coach to make that jump directly to MLB from the collegiate ranks. And this is even more shocking that he's jumping back to the SEC. And, you know, I, I'm sure he has his reasons, financial and family uh, involved in that. But the bottom line is he's, you know, he's quitting on a major league team in the middle of the season and a good team at that. Uh, he's, he's saying, you know, at the end of this series against Cleveland this week, he's saying, good luck against the Yankees in October, guys. I'll see ya. So I'm not saying that uh, they can't, you know, carry on the, the great pitching they've had uh, with Wes Johnson. You know, now that he won't be with them, but it's a stunner and it really rocked that clubhouse this week. Mm, it certainly does. Guy's going to hang out on Bourbon Street, though, and eat beignets, so he is going to be just fine. <laughs> Jack right. Flaherty, most recently dealing with dead arm. His manager, Carlos Marmol, said nothing was coming out of his hand correctly. That is a bummer for the Cardinals. What's yeah. your freak out factor? Yeah, he just didn't look right, unfortunately. Flaherty, mm. uh, that's another eight. Uh, that's how many innings they've gotten from Jack Flaherty this season. And uh, they also put Harrison Bader on the IL yesterday with plantar fasciitis. So that's another blow to a Cardinals team that's, you know, obviously neck and neck uh, with the Milwaukee Brewers in the NL Central. And uh, Flaherty was supposed to be a big midseason boost for them. And he just did not look right in those three stars. His command was off. Everything was just off. And you wonder if they just rushed him back a little too quickly. They were so, uh, you know, diligent with his, you know, patient with his process of getting the point of being on the mound. Uh, but then he felt good after a couple of minor league starts, and they decided, all right, let's 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 throw him in the big leagues. And obviously, it didn't work out particularly well. So he'll be out for some time. He he, he was adamant yesterday uh, that he will pitch again this season. But they need him right now, quite frankly, do the Cardinals. They got a great start from Adam Wainwright uh, on Monday night, but they've only got six quality starts in their last 18 games, putting a lot of pressure on the bullpen. Uh, that's a team that I would circle as, you know, maybe would be a good fit for one of the top end starters that, that are, you know, available at this trade deadline, be it Frankie Montas or I don't know if you go in the division for, Lu you know, Luis Castillo, but um, they might need some help, you know, because that's a that's a tough division race. And the Cardinals haven't fared very well against teams above 500 this season. So they, they might need to get some help in the rotation. Hoping for the best. He is a gamer. If he can come back, he will. He will miss an uncertain amount of time. As you noticed, as you said, I know how long the Angels and Mariners are going to miss because I got the punishments oh, yeah. heading down from the brawl. I mean, a list. And we're not just talking a short series. Well, never <laughs> just got there, Anthony. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I'll just put the freak out factor. The freak out factor doesn't even matter with this one. We'll put it two. That's how many games the Angels <laughs> interpreter has been suspended. Oh Manny Del Campo suspended <laughs> for two games. I don't know who's going to interpret now for a couple games, but um, no, it was crazy. I mean, 12, 12 people receiving 47 games worth of suspensions. You mentioned Phil Nevin. 
He's only managed the Angels for 19 games, and now he's suspended for 10. So now they're on the acting acting manager in Ray Montgomery, and uh, just just craziness all around in that situation on Sunday. And you know the interpreter gets banged, uh, the catching coach for the Angels he gets suspended, uh, and of course Rossiel Iglesias gets suspended two games for dumping sunflower seeds on the field. And I thought that was a little harsh because I think sunflower seeds are drastically overrated. So I think that should have been, uh, I don't think he should be suspended for that. I think that was actually a a good thing, but you know, I guess it's integrity of the game. We gotta, we gotta keep up with integrity of suspensions. He did not dump them, Anthony. He threw them with authority. (laughs) I think we saw that Ray was talking about how long he had to prepare. He was like, I had a long time to prep for this. Not Anthony Castrovince, the usually (laughs) calm and composed. Thanks. Joins us now here on MLB Central. Tim, first of all, you've partnered with Major League Baseball and MasterCard for this year's Home Team Advantage Small Business Contest. Tell us a little bit more. Uh, You know, it was an honor to be part of this uh, MasterCard Home Team Advantage Small Business Contest. To be able to share uh, their their passion, um, obviously, um, you know, the businesses that serve the our, business, small businesses, is what serves the backbone of, of the city of Boston, as as well as around the other the rest of the country. And it was an honor to be part of this and surprise a uh, uh, a small business owner with what we gave them. Yeah, you got to deliver that surprise as well. You were there, so so tell us all about uh, winning the, the the small business uh, uh, honor in Boston and and what they're doing. Yeah, I, I got a chance to, to visit with Roberto. He owns a Las Palmas restaurant with his wife. Uh, it's a family owned, it's uh, um, woman owned and uh, minority owned. And it was truly was an honor to, to surprise Roberto uh, with a $10,000 check um, as the small business winner um, contest. And it just, it was cool. I, I screwed up with the sign there. I just, I had backwards. <laughs> Ty- typical knuckleballer. But, uh, <laughs> You know, what he does, he, he, he puts money back into the community. Uh, he serves the community, especially during COVID. He was telling us that, you know, all they wanted to do was feed everybody uh, in, in, the, in, the, in the town that he lives in. And, so it's, and yeah, I got to taste the food, too. It's fantastic. I, I know, you know, you guys, uh, you know, being around a lot of Dominican players and they bring the food in, how, how uh, flavorful their food can be. Mm. Now, now tell us more about what, what MasterCard and, and Major League Baseball are, are giving Las Palmas as, as a winner of this home team advantage small business contest. Yeah, they, they got a check for $10,000. Um, our country was built on small businesses, and, you know, small businesses are the heart of, of our country. Uh, I was thrilled to join MasterCard and Major League Baseball through the home team uh, advantage small business contest that they kicked off in April. And, um, you know, he got a check for $10,000 and he's going to use it to, uh, to further expand his business so he can serve the community uh, even more. Tim, I'd, I'd imagine that uh, doing things like this has been kind of a part of your life uh, from the time you were playing. Obviously, the city of Boston means a lot to you. Uh, wh- when did this start, you know, your, your desire to give back? Is this something you always did as a player? Yeah, it's something I did as a, as a kid growing up in Melbourne, Florida. You know, I, uh, my dad played softball, and we would go to charity events and uh, just give back to the community. And I felt um, an obligation to do that. Uh, not only in my hometown of Melbourne, when I got to the big leagues, I started a golf tournament that lasted about 25 years, but also in the city that I played in with the city of Boston. Uh, and ever since I've been retired, obviously, I, I'm still doing some TV like you guys are, and um, I'm part of the Red Sox Foundation. Um, uh, the honorary chairman and do a lot of work and try to help promote, uh, you know, philanthropy, philanthropy in, in both cities that uh, I played in and, and the same one I grew up in. Wake, we've, we've weaved in and out through my career and your career, and you've had a heck of a career. Uh, and I'm always enamored by your story, and I know not everybody knows it, but you were drafted out of high school. You mentioned Melbourne, Florida as an infielder. You went up to New York uh-huh. Penn League in Ontario, went well in uh, Ontario, Canada. And somewhere yeah. early on, on, somebody said, look, this hitting thing probably isn't re- going to work <laughs> for you. But I watch, and, I, and I'm so enamored. I've always been so enamored with the knuckleball. Yeah. You had R.A. Dickey, yep. and there's not many of them. What, why don't you start like a knuckleball camp or, you know, like I remember the million, <laughs> million dollar arm. Remember when they went to India? Yeah. Like, seriously, wake. It's amazing. But as briefly, I know we're in television, but like, yeah. let the viewer, your story is like awesome. 
Yeah, I was drafted out of college as a hitter. I told people I was allergic to wood because once you took the aluminum bat out of my hand, I couldn't hit anymore. <laughs> and I, I, I did make a team out of spring training the next year, and I was just goofing around throwing knuckleballs with another first baseman. And uh, my coach walked behind me. He's actually his name's Woody Heike. He's still with the Pirates. He, he's like 80-something years old. He's still hitting fungos to everybody down there in Bradenton, Florida. And come that late, late that summer huh. – you know, they had the organizational meetings and they were going to, they got to my name and I was going to get released. And Woody Heike spoke up on my behalf and said, Hey, listen, before we let him go, why don't we send him to instructional league and turn him into a pitcher? And the rest is history. Those, uh, those uh, wily uh, baseball lifers, they seem to know something. And obviously, uh, yeah. Woody had a good idea of what he was doing with you. He did. Um, Al mentioned, I, I got to catch R.A. Dickey, and he used to tell me sometimes when he was out there on the mound, what, what he would rate his own knuckleball. And I just want right. to know, I, I spoke to you about this a little bit before, but uh, it, did you have that kind of experience, or was it more of you just had it every day, and, and it was whether or not <laughs> the wind played in, the hitters, whatever it was? I let the hitter be my barometer. There you, you know, go. You, you, if, they're get, if they're hitting it, if, and the catcher too, if he's missing it. But I would, there's times I, and I'm sure Al, you say the same thing. There's times you left the bullpen going, I'm going to throw a great game and not get out of the second inning. And then there's times where you're like, uh oh, I got nothing today. And then you go seven and get a duck. It's, it's so weird but in, in, in sports that way that it doesn't matter how good you feel during warm ups, it's how you, uh, how you perform on the field during competition. All right, 19 years, we're asked this uh, often, at least, uh, you know, play. Uh, 200 wins, a heck of a career. Mm -hmm. You know, pull the moment if you can. What, what, what was the game? What was the moment? What was the, like, wow, what, a, what an amazing experience and a dream come true? What was your moment? Uh, probably winning the World Series in 2004, you know, being